They imagine that we live in us like a, in, in effect, they have this world of barter, which is this mythical world as well that never actually existed, where we all walk around with, uh, some of us are carrying pigs and others are carrying apples, and we work out exchange rates between the two of us, and, and we use cowrie shells as, as a, as a intermediary to save having to calculate the pigs in terms of the apples. And it's really, as, as Minsky once said, it's like a model of a New Guinea highland tribal society with only one dif difference. That's not how the New Guinea highlanders behave anyway. It's a completely mythical vision that barter is what we do. Now that is, you can actually blame Smith for that because Smith, is, he, did, he did use the phrase invisible hand twice. And in, in, in the second time he used it, which is in The Wealth of Nations, he was talking about it being a reason not that you should have a market-oriented system, but he was using it as an explanation for why English manufacturers would not move production offshore from England to the Netherlands if we reduce tariffs. It's actually an argument totally different to the way that it's used, but it's such a powerful analogy, it gripped their minds. The other analogy, which he did use in, in exactly the way that economists think about it now, is to say that humans are the only animals that truck and barter. He literally did say nobody ever saw a dog make a fair and deliberate exchange of a bone with another dog. Okay. But in fact, barter is not what we human, do in, in society. And the work that you know, my, my friends Michael Hudson uh, Cornelia Wunsch and in David Graeber in particular for popularising this research have shown is that our societies began as gift societies. Okay? And we, we bond with each other by actually giving gifts to each other. And in our minds in those early cro societies, we kept tally of, uh, of who'd been generous to whom. And you, you had a social cohesion. If everybody was generous to everybody else, that was the nature of those early societies. They'd start to break down when you got more than about 150 people which is why you had the tribal developments and splitting out of different groups. Then we've got agriculture, and this is particularly going back to the Sumerian period. Um, the, you had the formation of large societies, and then the record keeping of this set of mutual obligations became delegated to a sort of combination religious and state authority. And that's what both the state and the banking system evolved out of over time. But they were all based on credit. And you can find all these early contracts written in cuneiform tablets, which are talking about people making exchanges on the basis of debts. Now the debts might have been measured in various commodities at different times, but they were credit obligations. And you'd hand over a credit obligation as a cuneiform tablet, record it and keep it at the, at the church stroke state, and that would then enable the commerce to occur. So we've always been credit and uh, effectively gift-based societies. Barter is an absolutely trivial component of human history, only in the, the strangest of circumstances, and normally, as David points out very well in his book, very ritualised. It's, it's not a standard thing whatsoever. So the standard stuff is we, we have a, a, what became, it was originally a gift-based exchange system that has become a credit-based exchange system. And barter is largely irrelevant, but they model as if barter is the whole way that we've always behaved. And so they've got a very elaborate model of a barter economy which has never existed on the planet.